The Pung family is on a house hunting roller coaster, and prices are only going up, up, up. This place was $1,000 per square meter last year. Now it's almost doubled, she says. That's way too much. It's the story of so many middle class Chinese being priced out of a booming real estate market. The Pungs have no choice but to continue renting and wonder if they've lost their chance to buy. Even people who make more money than us can't afford a house, Mr. Pung complains. Since the beginning of 2009, residential housing prices have jumped more than 40 percent in 36 cities across China. This 300 square meter apartment in central Shanghai is selling for 13 million dollars. Developers say as many as 50 percent of buyers are now purchasing homes not to live in, but simply as an investment. They buy it and just wait for the price to rise, this development manager says. To cool the market, the government has raised down payment and mortgage rates, tightened financing for developers, and made it harder to buy multiple homes. Prices are still rising, but more slowly, up 12.8 percent in April, but just 10.3 percent in July. That sparked concerns that overheating may have turned to overcooling. Either way, analysts say it's a market in confusion. So this is all the typical signs of a housing bubble, but it's persisted for years, and, and it could persist for, for a long time as long as people are willing to buy and hold empty property as a store of value. Despite prices going up, wealthier Chinese continue to buy. Some are speculating, but others are using property as a homegrown savings account, saying it's a better bet than an unpredictable stock market. The Lee family got lucky without even trying. When we bought our place, prices were just starting to rise, she says. If we'd waited two months, we might not have been able to afford it. They bought this modest apartment just last year. Its value has since shot up more than 50 percent when all they wanted was a place to call home. Emily Chang, CNN, Beijing.